Yo, welcome to this Throne and Liberty game review from someone that actually played the game and not just some random that played like two hours and instantly slaps a review on YouTube. As you can see, almost 260 hours of playtime did all the achievements that are possible with the current milestones that are being unlocked. Managed to get rank 17 in activity, rank 46 in the kill ranking, rank 45 in the growth ranking, peaking top 50 arena and being the second highest activity contributor in the guild conquest winning guild Requiem. And after close of a month of being released in the global version, I do want to talk a bit about the state of the game, my review and a more detailed analysis on what kind of players the game is currently catering to and if you should play it. Oh, so the first thing I want to talk about is actually a topic that's quite subjective, but it's actually fun. Like I've been playing MMOs for over 20 years now. I've done so many launches, releases, and I gotta say the early access launch was really smooth. And this paired with this highly competitive Guild Conquest event that we won was for me the best MMO launch I ever had. It was so much fun. That event pushed me so hard to grind more and not only PvE, but also PvP. Both felt like a real grind. It was an amazing challenge. The next part I want to talk about is the combat. In Korea, the combat felt extremely clunky, really slow. It was not a pleasant experience, I would say. But now, with all the skill specializations that they did, holy shit, it looks amazing. This single page here, the skill specializations, made the combat so nice. It's so fast paced, um, like it's unbelievably fun. Sorry to interrupt, but short self-promotion is needed. Currently, 91.2% of the people watching the videos are not subscribed to the channel. So let's make a deal. If you learn something new in this video, you have to subscribe. And we also don't have to forget that that game is a free to play title. And if we're looking at the graphics, I think they are astonishing. Just look off the depths here, like no loadings, really smooth going from one area to the other. Like it's running smoothly. If you have like 200, 300 people on the screen, it's just a really well-made piece of tech. And now something that I want to add to the positive side where some people might don't agree with me is that I think the monetization model in the global version compared to the Korean one is extremely fair. Just look at this, like 6,000 Lucent is about 100 Euro. I'm at 22,000 Lucent that I earned in-game with the auction house. That's almost 300 Euro that I was able to get access to of a value. I do not know any free-to-play MMO that has the ability to farm the cash currency that well and is not locking anything behind a paywall. Even stuff like Battle Pass, Leveling Pass is purchasable with the Lucent and everything can be farmed by a free-to-play player. The only thing that you have is you have a slight time gap between a free-to-play player and a whale on when they reach max gear. But besides this, at some point, they will be exactly equal and you have zero advantage then as a whale. So basically, you're only paying a bit to reach that point faster. And we also need to be realistic now, the amount of people that are RMTing in that game and actually making money with it is also huge. Also, I did try to gather some feedback on the people that are following my guides on the channel on how to farm Lucent, how to farm Solent, uh, and the people that followed those guides were easily able to reach a gear score of about 3k completely free to play and not with like full addict mode some people that went all the way in and actually listened to the advice that do not use any of the good gear by yourself at the start sell everything for lucent while it's still expensive because the economy will go down over the time no? they were now able to farm like 50k up to 90k lucent as a free to play player and they went into the auction house and pushed their gear all the way up now sometimes even to 3.4 to 3.5 K gear score, almost exactly the same state as a whale. But just like I said, they reached it at a later stage. And the next thing I want to talk about is the sheer endless amount of content that you can do once you're getting over the point that you're only seeing, okay, I can do three dungeon runs a day and 10 guild contracts. Once you understand the game and you have all those different features and farming strategies for the resources that you're currently in need for, you will basically never run out of anything to do. And once the um, rune system is being released, there will be even more no limit farming going on. So I think content wise, the game is absolutely delivering. 
So now let's come to the more negative parts of the game. I think the game is doing a horrible job in explaining the in-game system, such as trading, leveling up, and shaunting, um, auction house. I have received many feedback from people that quit the game just because they were not able to figure out some systems, did mistakes that make them feel like they were so far behind that they just quit the game. For me as a content creator, this is somewhat good because I can first off try to help those people and secondly, that will give me more views, right? But overall, I think for the game state, the systems in the game should be explained really well to the players to prevent them going into those frustration levels. Then when we are looking at PvP, I think the balance is not well made. I think it's due to the skill specializations that got introduced and the missing rune system, allowing you not to tag properly against um, counters. But overall, it does not offer enough counterplay to mechanics. So sometimes if you get caught by one CC, it's just over. They have already talked about introducing like a CC immunity after a point, but I don't think it was implemented properly, still allowing for massive CC chains that do not offer any counterplay. I know in a dev interview, they've already talked about making the stuns from Crate Sword of Fury attack so you can block it and make it more skill based the matchup. And I think this is already the good direction. They just have to actually follow it. Because if the game gets to a point where too many people are being frustrated, those changes are not being pushed. It does not work if you push those changes after the player base is declining, which is completely natural in an MMO. The next thing I want to talk about PvP related is actually the bow absorb passive, where when you are doing a weakening on that, it gives the um, bow user a shield that has a certain chance to appear, but it has no cooldown. That means basically you can get that lucky and get that shield up running nonstop or almost non-stop and um, that makes it really hard to kill but not only like healers that are where the bow is made for but also some of the high dps classes are using the bow as a um, damage dealing weapon so they have given a really good defensive me mechanism for healers also to damage dealers and i think this is also hurting the balance a bit but that is also easy fixable if they are just adding a cooldown to it so basically you can proc it then you have the four second um, effect and then afterwards for example you have a 15 second cooldown before the passive is able to proc again and then it would already be balanced it's really a minor change that is needed here the other part is that too many tanks are dealing way too much damage currently it's not the case that you have to pick either between being a tank or being like a bruiser that is somewhat tanky but also dealing damage at the moment you can just be a tank and still deal sometimes equal amount of damage to a, a dps and it's also some kind of a bursty damage not even a sustained dps making the sentence tank of liberty a well-known phrase used around the community and i think they really need to stretch it there and make the tank classes built so they either are tanky can provide setups for their team um, can provide some CC, all of that, what a tank is doing, like taking aggro, but they should not be able to deal that much damage. Or to also give some more flexibility, they can build into a bruiser type where they will not be tanky, not be such, such sustainable, but also have the ability to deal some damage. And the last thing I want to talk about is the sheer amount of boonstones and rift stones that you can see on the map. All those symbols here is one of those stones that can be claimed by a guild. One guild can only have two, one boonstone, one rift stone, but there is so many of them that the people are just dodging each other instead of going into the PvP competition. So I would highly like to see some kind of higher rewards that are forcing the guilds to actually participate in this guild versus guild combat. Because from my opinion, this is the fairest form of PvP combat that you will have in that game. It's only a fixed number of players versus another fixed number of players. And you do not have any issues with alliances outnumbering you by a crazy amount. Now I want to give you a little prediction of, of what I think is going to happen to Throne of Liberty in the future. As all MMOs, I think over the next months we will see a decline of the player base. But I think that this game currently has the potential and the Korean devs have shown on how fast they can push out content that it will feel more like a Diablo 4 version where you have like seasons. So basically they're pushing an expansion. We are giving an insane peak, probably in a higher peak than other expansion releases on MMOs. And the reason why I think that is because you are able to clear all the 
newly released content with mid gear on a lower skill level. It's not gate kept for casuals. Like everyone can just like log in, even though the character is a bit old, go there and farm the, this new content. And I think that will suit the majority of the PVE casual player base really well and make them come back to the game even more than to other games where you feel like you are extremely behind if you come back. And I also have a feeling that that's probably going to be the last really large scale PVP MMO that is going to be released. We know Ashes is trying to do 500 versus 500, but that's still no comparison about the insane size of sieges that can happen when in Throne of Liberty. And I think just that fact makes the game really unique and special. If you want to dive into that feeling and going into these giant battles that you will probably not find anywhere else in this quality and performance. So now let's answer the question, who should actually play Throne and Liberty? Who does it cater to? And I think the game is doing an excellent job in catering to PvE casuals that just want to play a little bit. The daily system, if you do not go around the daily caps, is like really fair. Battle Pass is easy to max, um, the dungeons are not that hard, like you can progress through all the content as a casual really well and have a good time. But that on the other hand also means that someone that is more hardcore PvE oriented, you will probably not have any fun in Throne and Liberty. Maybe later when they're releasing all the challenge dungeons where you can go and put the difficulty all the way up to tier 30. But at the moment, if you're looking for a PvE challenge, that's definitely not your game. But the true content of which Throne of Liberty is actually made for is PvP. And here you have to do two things. First, you need to have somewhat of an understanding of politics because it's similar to real life. Some of those wars are being decided on the table and not on the battlefield. Just when alliances come, when betray happens and all of that. And politics in PvP is a big part about that game. You should be aware of this. But aside of this, I think it is the best spot for competitive PvP and MMOs at the moment. I am enjoying it a mile. It's really, really great. And I think if they are able to fix the couple issues that I said regarding the PvP balance, it's going to be a 10 out of 10 for me. But then on the other hand also means that if you're a casual wanting to enjoy some PvP, it's not worth it. I would not try it. You will just get run down and it's not a good experience for you. Yeah, and as always, if you have any questions regarding the game, just drop a comment. I will answer everything in less than 24 hours. Cheers, guys.